pop quiz. What's something that you can see, you can copy, you can even have, but you cannot use? The answer is a state-of-the-art open source model. Unless you are rich enough to have the hardware that would cost at least 400k, then running a copy of DeepSeek V3 is just a pipe dream for most of us. So in response, researchers make smaller models or even distill them into smaller sizes. And in some cases, lowering the hardware requirement by up to 10 times. But again, even though it's 10 times cheaper, it still requires a GPU worth a whopping 20k to run on. So if you really want to run an AI model yourself, you're basically left with one other option, which is choosing a model that has even less parameters. Depending on your GPU, a 7 billion parameters or a 1.5 billion parameters model might sound great for you. But that means you have to use an AI with a very tiny brain, and sometimes it can feel really frustrating talking to it. So to reduce the hardware requirement for larger models, researchers look towards the inside of the model, which are the ways that influences how an input is mapped to an output. Without going too deep into the math, an AI model is basically like a function f, where if you pass through an input x, it'll give you an outcome y. And in that function, aka the AI model, you would usually have a weight that will convert x into output y, and this weight is determined through training. So when you stack a lot of weights together and make it learn, it will somehow start to be able to solve your homework. In a typical model setup, a weight is stored using FP16, which is a number system that uses 16 bits to store a number. And this weight thingy pretty much represents what we refer to as a parameter. So in the simplest case, a 7 billion parameter model means there are 7 billion numbers represented in 16 bits, which would be around 14 gigabytes. So to make sure that the model generates fast, we put that 14 gigabytes of weights into the GPU VRAM to ensure minimum slowdown on the calculation. But let's say you only have a GPU with 8 gigabytes of VRAM. You can't fit everything in it, right? Well, technically, you can actively rotate out different weights, aka offloading, but that slows down the whole process significantly even if you might keep its performance. So one of the common solutions is to quantize the models. Instead of using 16 bits to store a weight, we can just use maybe half of it or even a quarter of it to store a weight. But that would mean we are losing a lot of precision between numbers. Because with FP16, the smallest increment between numbers is around 0.001, and in FP8, it's around 0.125, and in int4, it's basically one because everything is an integer. Not to mention, the amount of numbers that can be represented will also shrink exponentially too. The weights would then have to be rounded up or down, which will impact the prediction accuracy of the function. And if you want to learn more about floating points in relation to LLMs, we just published a premium blog on my newsletter explaining it in details on how it works. And in this premium insights tier, you would also gain access to all my monthly research reports on over 50 papers, on top of blogs from guest authors on the latest topics too. Anyways, to make quantized models use there will be this calibration data set that will fine tune the models again after quantization. Then why go through all these trouble just to run a larger model when we can just run a smaller one? Well with this method, it does show that we are able to cut down the memory usage by at least a half. On top of that, the performance drop off between FP16 and FP8 is not off by that much. So in most cases, when you want to run a model, it'll probably be better to run it at FP8 as it'll be smarter and more economical. And with this research paper backing up the fact that using a quantum quantized model is usually better than using a smaller model with full precision. Actually, there are more than a handful that already proved that. You can look for even more if you ask my website, findmypapers.ai, which went more in depth about how it works, what was being experimented on to prove this, and what might be the exceptions. But if you do eventually quantize down to let's say int4, isn't the model going to be extremely lobotomized? Well, what if I tell you how you quantize them makes a huge difference? And because of that, there are even researchers working on proving LLMs could run with just one bit per weight, and just two months ago, showing the world that it actually works. But before we dive into it, we all know how chaotic work life can get. Slack messages scattered, email thread buried, and critical context slipping through the cracks of your work while you spend more time hunting for answers than actually working. That's why I'd like to share with you about Tenka, your new AI work companion that makes your work life as easy as a simple QA. Picture this, instead of piecing together notes from Slack, Gmail, and Drive, you open Tenka and instantly find the exact chat, doc, or metric you need as simple as that. No more digging through 10 different apps, opening 20 different tabs, and still being lost. Every reply you send is powered by up to the minute context, so your responses are fast, on brand, and hyper relevant too. More specifically, Tenka provides structured memory and instant search. This converts scattered chats, calendars, and docs into a single searchable team brain so you can find anything with one prompt. And Tenka doesn't just solve the fragmentation of information, it merges internal communications with knowledge management through an agentic pipeline, creating a unified communication hub like a real AI employee that could actually ship deliverables. So every team member would have a multi 
functional teammate boosting your productivity, increasing the organizational communication into a seamless process, and have it getting work done for you. It is an easy plug and play integration with Knowledge Graph. It can sync with Slack, WhatsApp, Gmail, Outlook, Notion, and Sheets in real time, weaving your tools into one cohesive memory. This lets you draft perfectly tailored messages, smart vote surfaces, group consensus, and auto generated task lists for you. And the coolest thing they have is the AI memory inheritance and transfer. So when your roles change, Tenka hands off the person's entire knowledge graph to the next teammate, onboarding them in hours, not weeks. So if you're ready to power up your work efficiency, Tenka is offering three months of free premium if you sign up today. You can also refer a team and earn 20 bucks each. So go download Tenka now with the link down in the description and thank you Tenka for sponsoring this video. Anyways, the idea was first proposed back in October 2023 in the research paper called BitNet, Scaling One-Bit Transformers for Large Language Models. In the paper, they suggest that what if we have an LLM model with only one bit weights, which would only represent one or negative one. Like imagine a model that potentially requires 16 times less storage than a standard model, and on top of that, removing the need of matrix multiplications because simple addition and subtraction would be enough for only two numbers. However, not only does this introduce some extreme mathematical challenges since you only have two integers to work with, it is also impossible to convert all the weights into one bit, especially when the weights for the attention mechanism and the signals that are passed between the layers, aka the activations, are extremely important. And unlike models that are quantized after undergoing training in full precision, BitsNet is trained from the ground up with this one bit setup, which gives a much better stability because your goal is not to salvage performances, but instead building representations from the ground up. So even though realistically only certain layers like linear projections can implement one bit weights, they were still able to substitute components like bit linear to replace the standard matrix multiplication, which would use much less compute. Because again, you only have two numbers, so multiplication is not really needed. While they did not explicitly state how much less memory this one bit LLM requires, it still uses 30 times less energy compared to a model with 7 billion parameters in full precision, which is even better than just the 16 times we initially expected. But this pure one bit setup has a major flaw. Even though it can represent one and negative one, it is still mathematically stuck at always providing signals. And this is not a great thing because sometimes dead signals are also as important. So to fix this problem, the same researchers introduced BitNet B1.58 four months later. This time, in addition to one and negative one, they introduced a new state, which is zero. The power of zero is that it introduces sparsity where it essentially allows the model to turn off the connection between neurons. This not only improves model performance significantly, but also keeping the benefit of not requiring matrix multiplication. And this time, they actually shared the exact memory saved when using BitNet. For a Llama 1 model at 1.3 billion parameters which is used as a baseline, BitNet B1.58 uses nearly 3 times less memory while being 66 times faster. For a Llama 1 model at 3 billion parameters, BitNet B1.58 uses 3.5 times less memory and is 2.7 times faster. Even though at 1.3 billion parameters, BitNet performs worse than the full precision Llama model, for the 3 billion parameters model, it is still able to match and even beat it across the board, suggesting a really promising scaling law where the more parameters they have, the better BitNet is. As for memory savings, it also has a similar trend. When BitNet is scaled up to 70 billion parameters from 1.3 billion, it requires 7.16 times less memory than Llama 70B from merely 3 times when it's 1.3 billion. And the best part is that a 70 billion parameters BitNet B1.58 is still more efficient in terms of generation speed, memory usage, and energy consumption than a 13 billion parameters full precision LLM. Oh, and the reason why it's called B1.58 is because instead of the original two states that can be stored in one bit, now you technically have three numbers to store, so the information content per weight is now around 1.58 bits. While this research paper is a great success in proving that BitNet works, especially in larger parameter counts, it still doesn't change the fact that BitNet is only addressing the weight size. The activations are still being passed around in 8 bits, and the KV cache is still a bottleneck that stacks up easily the longer the context window is. So to juice out some extra efficiency, the same researchers dive into reducing the activation from 8 bit into 4 bit 8 months later. In this research called BitNet A4.8, it uses 4 bit activations for attention and feed forward network inputs while utilizing sparsification with 8 bits for intermediate states like the outputs for attention. The 8 bits still have to exist there, or else it will introduce quantization errors due to their specific specific data distributions, which usually include very important outlier values. And as you can see from their experiment, the 
performance of Fold N4 and A4.8 is actually huge, demonstrating that 8-bit is extremely important because as you can see, N4 does not even converge. As for the context window, KV cache can easily stack up quadratically the longer the context is and use up a significant amount of memory especially if they are stored in FP16 or even FP8. So BitNet A4.8 introduces 3-bit KV cache and if you look at the benchmark performance, it has barely any degradation on average accuracy. Having this 3-bit KV cache means that compared to 16-bit cache, you basically can have a context window that is 5 times larger while using the same amount of memory. What's even cooler is that BitNet A4.8 is also not a dense model, which means it does not have 100% of the parameters used in the computation for every input. This is thanks to the number 0 that BitNet B1.58 introduces, so there's now an optional state of doing nothing. This then enables the researchers to incorporate some decent amount of sparsity by using only 55% of the parameters for every input, kind of like mixture of expert models that have active parameter counts. A very promising technique, right? But so far, even though BitNet has been tested up to 7 billion parameters and outperforms the LAMA baseline, it was only being trained with 100 billion tokens. So the very last hurdle is getting the training tokens up to the trillion level and proving BitNet truly works at scale. By the way, to show you why BitNet is actually amazing, let me put some rough numbers up to give you some perspective. Since a 2 billion parameters BitNet model uses around 20 times less energy, I'll assume that it requires around 20 times less flops to train compared to a typical 2 billion parameters transformer model. And by using a formula from a research paper that FindMyPapers.ai found for me, the flops required for training a model can be estimated with this formula 6 times n times d, with the number 6 being an empirical approximation for the flops required per parameter, the letter n being the number of parameters in a model, and d being the total number of tokens processed during training. So training a 1-bit net at 2 billion parameters with 1 billion tokens plus a 20 times reduction in energy used, it would cost around 6 to the power of 19 flops, and with an A100 that delivers 1 times 10 to the power of 15 flops per second, with a GPU hourly renting price being $2, that'll be about 33 bucks in total per run. And for the latest paper published on BitNet called B1.58 to B4T, which basically means they train it on 4 trillion tokens for a 2 billion parameters model, this would have cost them around 1.3k for one training run. So compared to the models that don't have the 20 times energy reduction, it's estimated to cost 26k per one training run. This budget makes BitNet incredibly attractive, especially with how it only has 0.4 gigabyte of memory footprint while being comparable with Quen 2.5 1.5b, which is five times its size. Not to mention, Quen 2.5 1.5b is trained with 18 trillion tokens, which is 4.5 times more than BitNet. They also estimated the energy used in this table, so it is not exactly 20 times less energy, but instead around 12.4 times less. However, this is still pretty nuts. 10 times less energy costs across the board compared to all the other models while having the same performance on top of having 5 to 12 times less memory usage. The scaling law it demonstrates is extremely promising. Maybe the era of BitNet is indeed upon us. The next thing to look forward about BitNet is its long context performance, especially a 4.8's 3-bit KV cache, which could extend the context window 5 to 12 times while using the same amount of compute. On top of that, there is still free performance being left on the table because there is currently no hardware optimized for their 1.58 bit aka ternary operation. So with the current hardware technology, BitNet is still not running optimally. And if you want to try it out, the BitNet B1.58 to B4T models are now available on Hugging Phase. You can download it yourself or try out their demo online here. There are also a ton of other research papers that dives in deeper into solving the ternary operations for transformers, addressing a lot of interesting technical challenges, which I don't have a chance to get to in this video. So instead, I'll leave a list of them here so you can check it out if you're interested. Or you can also ask FindMyPapers.ai for more. And thank you guys for watching. A big shout out to Andrew Laschelius, Chris Ledoux, Degan, News Research, Kanan, Robert Zaviasa, Louis Muck, Ben Shainer, Marcelo Ferraria, Zane Sheep, Poof and Inu, DX Research Group, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow me on Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see y'all in the next one.